Hey guys, it's Matt and welcome to another Minecraft video. Um, today's video is sort of a redstone, well it's not really a redstone because it's got no redstone in it. Um, basically I've been messing around with some filters and um, I created something that I thought had been done before because it's not very, I don't think it was very original but I've looked around and I've not actually found any videos on it. And I thought it was a bit odd that. Um, it's a TNT cannon, except this is an infinite TNT cannon and it's rapid fire and it's very destructive. Um, I thought this would have been done before but apparently it hasn't so I thought I'd make a video on it to show you guys and I'm also going to show you how to make it using MC Edit as well because it does use MC Edit. So let's go into my adventure map beginnings, I don't really know why it's called that. And that's the TNT cannon. Um, it's one block wide as you can see, it's just one spawner and it spawns a lot of TNT and as you can tell it's pretty damn destructive. So that's basically all it is. Um, <laughs> there's not really much else to show, but I will show you how to make it because it's not just as simple as making some prime TNT and doing that. Um, you could probably change like the direction that it's in. The only reason it's like that is as you can, if you follow like the trajectory back, it goes to this. Oh, well, look at that! It's a, it's a TNT cannon, an actual TNT cannon. Basically, what I did was I fired it, and as it's there, I paused the game. But I'll we'll go into that. Um, I just think it's pretty cool to look at. I like how it makes like this nice arcing sweep. Now it didn't do that the first time, I have refined it a little bit. As you may, may notice, the spawn is there, but it's spawning it here. Now I'll come into why it does that in a second, that's basically why it does this in this nice arc. Anyway, we'll get rid of this. I'll get rid of this just to show that it is that it's spawning them. There we go, all the TNT will disappear. This is the pit that it creates. That there was just another one that I was trying. This was actually from one. TNT spawner, it was destroying there, there and there, and then it did actually blast a bit of TNT back and destroy the spawner which was there. But anyway, let's get into how you make it. So, if we come over here, what you want to do is, I'm not going to fire it at that, oh my god. You want to make, oh, I'll aim it in this direction actually, so you'll want to punch out five squares like that. Then if you want to go in that direction, put some water at the back like that, so it's flowing in the direction you want to shoot the TNT. Half slab at the front just to get the height or you don't have to this is the bit where you can sort of experiment with like blocks and stuff like that but I like a half slab and then a block there then you want to wire 4 TNT along put 4 TNT in the water there and one up there the reason the water is there is that when all these become entities when you prime them they're, they're not blocks anymore the water will flow through them all so they won't destroy anything so now what we're going to do is I'm going to place a torch here to light all these and then after a delay I'll place a torch here to prime that TNT I'll punch out this block so it lands on the half block to be sure and then that'll fire that and I'm going to pause the game so we'll, go, we'll do that now then I'll light the TNT oh did that blow up did that fire the TNT? yeah it did okay cool so you want to pause the game and now we're going to go into MC Edit okay so we're in MC Edit now this is our TNT cannon here and that red square up here is the TNT entity. Now if you look at, look around all the red cubes are the entities and all the green cubes are also entities but they're like dropped items and stuff. So what we're doing now is we need to select this this spawner. So if we draw a square around it roughly that, that'll that have it in it. I will bring this up just to make sure there's nothing else in it. So we have... Oh, hang on, is that, oh no we've missed it alright then. That's the one problem, I'm pretty rubbish with perspective in this program. But there we go, so we have it selected now in that box. Um, so if we go to our filters tab, um, you may not have the spot, you may not have this filter, or you might, but I'll see if I can find a link for it, and if not, I'll, I'll, see, I'll put a link in the description for it. So it's called Create Spawners. Now, you may notice a box that says Include Position Data. Now, if, we, if you don't check that, what it'll do is it'll spawn the TNT near the actual spawner, like you know, like a normal spawner. So say like if I don't check that, what it'll do, we'll, ha we'll have a spawner in the air, and what it'll do is it'll shoot TNT at that velocity like it was. So it'll go in the trajectory like that, in that direction, around that spawner. So it'll it'll be a bit un, it won't be as refined as the one we've already as the one I just showed you. It'll be like it'll be a little bit of, it'll be a bit of variation and because the blocks in the way some of them will fight up and some will just get knocked down and stuff like that and it might even blow up so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click include position data now what that does is when I create the spawner I can move the spawner over there if I want to but it'll only spawn it in this point still it'll remember 
the position of the entity. So I'm going to tick that so I can move the spawner out of the way to protect it because TNT can destroy spawners. So we'll click filter and as you can see the entity has disappeared and we now have a mob spawner. And now what that's going to do is that's going to spawn TNT at that position and fire it that way. But since I've included position data, what I, what I can do now is, God damn it, is I can select the spawner. God damn it, why is it doing that? Let's get a little bit closer. There we go. I can move the spawner out of the way like that and it'll still only be spawning uh, there pretty much. And now I've selected the spawner. We'll go to we're going to use another filter now. It's called change spawner properties. I'm going to set the delay to two. Basically, two ticks is one redstone tick, which is 0 0.1 seconds. And I want it to spawn one every two. So the min and max are the same because I want it to be constant. And the current, I don't even know why there's, there's three. To be honest, I always set them to the same anyway. The spawn count. Let's just put up it to three, so it spawns three at once. Because you know why not? The entity cap. We want that to be high because if this, oh, if they, if it was six, if there's six nearby, it'll stop spawning. So we'll have like bursts, which which would be pretty cool if it was to say it's a three. You go da 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 da, da which would be pretty cool. Um, detection range. Um, this depends. If you want it for an adventure map, you want you may want it to be close. So if like the exploding cars that we're going to be having in the unnamed map. Um, I've just got a mob spawner that spawns TNT on that position. If you get close to it, it blows up. But for the sake of this, I want to be able to stand pretty far away. So we'll say detection range 100. And then the spawn radius of 1. We'll filter that. We'll save it. And then we will go back into Minecraft. But that is pretty much... That's the spawner finish. That's all you have to do. So, okay. So we're back in Minecraft now. That's the spawner. I've moved just slightly far away so it's stopping. It's not spawning. Or at least I can't see the entity. So I'll play update and there'll be a massive hole now. But here we go. So that's the spawner done. As you can see, that's the trajectory it took. We paused the game there so the entity was there. And then we've set it so it's just spawning. Lots of TNT. And this is the hole it's making. <laughs> As you can see, it's pretty destructive. Um, what we can, what you can do with this then, is um, there's another filter um, that Sethling made for 1.4.6 where you can combine spawners and have them all into one. If you were to make a load of different types of TNT tra trajectories, like one flying forwards, one shooting upwards, and combine all the spawners together, you'd sort of have like a rapid fire. Well, this is rapid fire, but this is projectile. This is like one projectile, and that spawner would fire TNT everywhere, and that'd be massively destructive. Now, another thing that would, be, would have been good to do is what I should have done actually is I can set the delay, like how how long the TNT has left before it explodes. I think four seconds is the maximum. If I set that in MC Edit to four seconds, this, as you can see, that's the range. It blows up there. It would have been cool to have it so that that could have gone further, so it would have destroyed the bedrock. I mean, it will keep eventually knocking TNT out, like you see. So it will keep destroying it every now and again. Other than that, it stops there. But that's basically all it is. I can't believe no one's made a video on this. I suppose the closest is like the TNT tornado on Sethling's channel, which is pretty cool. But this is like a proper cannon. And if you were to make it so that this is a five block radius, you could have this under the ground. You'd say there'd be a button to press there'd be a button saying press this to fire the cannon. That'd activate a command block to teleport you down. So you're next to the spawner for a second and then there'd be a pressure plate to teleport you back up again. And then basically all you'd see is you go, your screen would go black for a second and it'd fire a load of TNT. So that would sort of be the application for this. Other than the fact that it just, do, it just looks cool, really. And the fact that it's infinite TNT at the end of the day is also pretty good. But that's pretty much it. Um, so I will see you in the next video, guys.